Wherever you are joining from, welcome to today's webinar from the Global Network of Women's Shelters and the Asian Network of Women's Shelters, Coronavirus and Women's Shelters Policy Perspectives on Protection of Victims of Domestic Violence During the Outbreak. At this time, I will turn it over to Anthony Curlow from Garden of Hope in Taiwan. Thank you very much, Ashley, and welcome everyone. Good morning, <clears throat> good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the second in our series of webinars on the coronavirus and uh, shelter services and protection of survivors of domestic and gender-based violence. Uh, today, we're very happy to have uh, two people from the Taiwanese government who are here uh, to, to share their experiences with, with us. Um, in a moment, we'll be hearing from uh, Section Chief uh, Yiru, Chen Yiru. Uh, she's a Section Chief at the Department of Protective Services under the Ministry of Health and, and Welfare. And uh, her department handles domestic violence prevention and uh, as well as uh, the hotline and shelters. And she also helped us a lot last year with uh, the Fourth World Conference of Women's Shelters. Uh, I'll be translating directly for her. First of all, we're very, very honored uh, to have uh, uh, Dr. Tu Xingzhe here with us today. He's, um, he's the current chairperson of the D Development Center for Biotechnology, and he was also the Minister of Health uh, during the SARS crisis in Taiwan in 2002 and 2003. And it's, uh, um, we, we think, one of the reasons that Taiwan has been more resilient uh, to the coronavirus outbreak so far um, is because of the experience, the painful experience we had uh, 16 years ago during the SARS epidemic. So Dr. Tu has a, um, a wide, a vast um, a wealth of experience in this area and also with uh, the SARS crisis. And he can tell us about what uh, the government is doing here in Taiwan uh, to uh, protect uh, people in general against uh, the, the COVID-19 epidemic and also uh, how we can specifically uh, protect shelters and protect survivors of uh, domestic violence. So I'll hand over now uh, to Dr. Tu. Dr. Tu will speak for about 20 minutes and then Miss um, Chen will tell you to speak for another five minutes and then we'll open up to the regions and then questions. There's no need to use the microphone, so you don't have to use that. Oh, speak to it. Uh, Anthony, uh, Ms. Jing and uh, Ms. Chen, uh, dear friends uh, in other countries, um, Dr. Tu, I speak uh, very fast because only 20 minutes. So if not clear enough, uh, I believe the uh, PowerPoint slides to here, and uh, you can ask me uh, later when we have Q&A. Oh. Okay, good afternoon. Okay. Can I control that? that this, this? Oh, next slide, please. Oh, you, can I control myself? Mm. Oh, no, you just tell Ashley to tell me to use the next slide. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> but, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, I will speak about the Wuhan pneumonia. We call it Wuhan pneumonia. It's a COVID-19 COVID virus. And uh, when you get infected, what uh, uh, happen and how to control and how to protect yourself and the institution. Next. Next. Uh, first. Okay. The, the buy. Oh. Automatic? Oh, but can I control my show? No. Okay. Okay. The virus is not beautiful like this. Next. Okay, this uh, epidemic, this virus infection was occur uh, in China in last year, uh, December 1st. It's the first case at Wuhan, China. Later, they think this may be infected by some kind of animal, uh, but uh, they say that this is not a human to human transmission. And on the uh, 31st uh, December, they deported to WHO. At the time, we know that this must be human to human transmission. Uh, but until uh, that January 20 th this year, they admitted that they are uh, human to human transmission. That the uh, data about two months later. Uh, next. On 19th January, South Korea has the first case. On 20, 
the USA and Taiwan has the first case. And uh, Wuhan, China, they shut down, uh, they shut down the, the, the whole city and the, the whole province. But when they declare that they will shut down the city, at, at fact, they delayed eight hours to execute that. So five million people already left to other privileges and all the other countries already. France had the first case on 23rd, uh, Germany 26, Italy 29, UK 30, and then the whole world. Next. Now, more than 190. Next. Uh, you can see that more than 588,000 documented case already and 42,000 deaths already. And uh, this is an estimate, an report. Next. So some cases are still active. Among them, 5% have serious and critical uh, condition. And for close cases, the fatality rate is 90%. It's so high. Next. And this is uh, the, the curb of the epidemics. Uh, the case now uh, uh, is more than 750,000 uh, uh, cases. Next. This is the curve of the days. You can see both curves show the exponential increase. That's, this is the typical uh, infectious disease curve. The one transmitted to two or three or four, we call R0. That if you transmit the three, the three transmitted nine, and nine transmitted to 27, we call this exponential increase. You can see that uh, in the first, it looks very slowly, but later it's sharply increased. Uh, 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 in the fact that uh, the doubling time is the same. But it looks like this is very, very, very astonishing. Next. You will see that uh, uh, new case, incident case, new case every day. You can see that still exponential increase and still increase. When the, the number of new cases today, uh, more than the number of new cases yesterday, we call this epidemic still ongoing. But if today's case decrease, this then the new case or yesterday, we call the epidemic subsided, uh, start to decrease. You can see that there are two curves. The first, a small one is China, from China. Uh, some, 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 something, the one, one very big, <laughs> Uh, big dying that's uh, not uh, uh, correct. There's a uh, curve, so it's not very correct. But the data, the big curve is from other country. So that uh, uh, this epidemic just is much more than the, the infections in China already. Of course, uh, nobody believe that China's data is correct. <laughs> Next one. Uh, this is the Taiwan case uh, from that. Uh, 21st January to now, it also shows the same curve. Exponential increase like that. Now we have 322 cases and five days. Next. Okay, next. If you get infected, what happened? Next. Usually you have uh, incubation period of about the uh, Two to 40 days, average is 5.2 days. That means if you get infected, you have no symptoms until about uh, uh, five days later you get symptoms. But some people have transmitted uh, ability before uh, symptom sign developed. Next. About the symptoms, fever, 
uh, account for 98.6 percent fatigue about 70 percent drive call 60 percent and other uh, 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 symptoms next but 80 percent of cases are mild and uh, some are asymptomatic so that's uh, not documented here next Next. And the case fatality is wrong. This case fatality rate is about 3.4 fatality rate by WHO. But every country is different. In Italy, the case fatality rate is about 10%. And in Germany, it's only 0 0.7 or 0.8%. In Korea, 1.5%. In the United States, it's about 2%. So every country, not, not the same, but it's uh, if you account for some asymptomatic or mild disease, maybe it's around 1%. Next. More, most of this comes from the people with uh, pretty existing diseases like uh, cardiovascular disease. If you have cardiovascular disease and you get COVID-19 infection, 10.5% uh, uh, will lie. For diabetes, 7.3% that, that is. And for chronic respiratory disease, hypertension, cancer, okay, that will also or, 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 or lie uh, about 6%. Next. Male, it's easier to die, okay, than female the, after invasion. Uh, like this, 4.7 for male, 2.8 for female. Next, age. The older people, it's easier to die after infection. For zero to nine years old kids, no fatality. For 10 to 39, years old, only 0.2%. And after that increase, uh, uh, sharply. Uh, next. Uh, summary, some of the infections, some have no symptoms, about 80%. And some have disparate symptoms, about then three-fourths will develop pneumonia and most with recovery, but 4.6 of pneumonia case with uh, so severe, uh, we call acute respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, this is serious, uh, severe disease. And uh, among them, 40% would die. So in totally, if we have symptoms, 1.36% fatality rate. The next. But some have no symptoms. So how to control the epidemics? Next. We must know how the disease, the virus transmitted, then we can control them. Is this virus, is this virus transmitted by air? Some say yes, but actually not important because this is not a like uh, some other uh, when we say it means it can transmit very far away uh, because of uh, uh, air can, can bring this virus part, particle. Uh, we call nebulizer, nebulizer effect, but not, not, not really important. Droplet, yes. Droplet for new sneezing or cough, they come out. Uh, it will uh, drop on the table, on the floor. It's about the, uh, if you cough very, Maybe uh, it's sharp always strongly. Maybe the drop can fly to two meter or one point of five meter. So the fact that we call the safe distance, but usually it's a drop very fast uh, to the front. So yes, droplet is infectious dude, infectious 
right now, uh, not so important. The most important transmission route is contact. Contact means that uh, not the, the virus not come from other people to you, but come from your hand. And your hand touch the, the table, touch the toilet, then you bring the virus to your mouth, nose, or eye. It's your fingers. This we call contact. Next. So we know that. But uh, unfortunately, this is not like SARS. This asymptomatic case can transmit the virus. And we know that uh, about uh, two studies, one is a 59%, one is a 68%, about 7%, 70% are no symptom or my symptom and not tested and not documented. Uh, but they can transmit virus. They can transmit the virus, the, the not so capital, but uh, about half of the documented cases. Documented can spread because they have sneezing and a cold, so more, 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 more infectious. But no symptom cases still can transmit. Well, maybe because they touch the many, many activity. So transmission from undocumented cases account for 80% of documented cases. Means that uh, if you find a, if you find a 20 cases, maybe actually there are 100 cases. Next. So how to control? Uh, first, the patient come from other country. So you must block the border. And uh, when the patient come into my country, either he will transmit among in the family or in the hospital or go outside of family and hospital to the community. Next. So how to prevent your control? First, cross the border and uh, find the cases, the infected cases, document cases, and isolate them. And for suspicion or contact, we get quarantine. Uh, this is the fact that we are governed now. Now we cross the border to every country already. So no, no anyone a foreigner can go into Taiwan now. If you can, you can go, you can come in. If, because your business or anything, you must quarantine 14 days uh, uh, in the hotel or the, in the institution. The second is hospital control, hospital infection control. The doctor, uh, nurses in the hospital, they must control this and uh, early detect the infected patient and isolate, isolate them. This is very important, especially for hospital uh, person, uh, personnel, the doctor must be very cautious and uh, very sensitive and uh, test the suspect cases uh, eagerly. And uh, look at everyone. So, homemade theft. Okay, next. This is about the home isolation. Next. Can I control myself? Okay. The persons have contact with confirmed case must be home isolation. And uh, with a uh, travel history, uh, just home quarantine. Uh, they got uh, uh, for 14 days. Next. The isolation is effect. They can decrease the second curve. If you can isolate 90%, it can decrease in the, in the, the curve so long. If we can isolation plus quarantine, 90%, 90% isolation, 90% quarantine is almost a threat. Next. So this uh, is the success of Taiwan. For hospital infection, we use uh, this kind of fever uh, screen uh, placed and uh, go like that, uh, separate route into the hospital. Next. Uh, like the next, everyone must uh, check next. And uh, for big activity, first, you can see that uh, if uh, infectious people, then the crowd density, 
the gist of measure rate that we call R0. Uh, the, the activity exposure time that combined together the, 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 the ability to spread next. For the, we call social distance. Uh, if uh, the distance is zero, uh, is uh, two pointers than uh, are, are zero. If uh, one meter, the transmission possibility is one, one to one. If, the, if you the increase the distance to 100 centimeter, then only 0 0.3 chance to transmit the disease. Next. This is uh, high risk means uh, many patients inside the group. So if you can de de decrease the infected people, means isolate them. But some are asymptomatic, then the, the right one is no risk. Next. If uh, you must uh, get uh, that in, in the airplane, you, you must separate the infected people uh, in the, in, in, uh, together and uh, the, the health people together. And the fever screening, contact surveillance, and increased social distance. Next. This is like increased social distance. Finland people are always separated for one, one meter. Next. And how to protect yourself? Next. Uh, you must inform, prepare, smart, and safe to keep yourself safe. Next. If there are some people infected, you must be supportive, careful, alert not to be infected, and be kind to them. Next. You must be ready for the infection. Be, be safe, be smart, be kind. Next. How to be safe? You, if you have disease, you will not go to the crowded area that may intact, interact with people. That it means that to stay at home. Next. Uh, be kind of if some people have infected in your institution or your friend, be kind to them. Check in and uh, encourage them to keep doing what they enjoy. And share information. Okay. Provide calm and correct advice. And uh, the stigma. Prevent you. Okay, next. shows empathy and about this risk. Next, be kind to them, be kind to them, be smart. That means if you are getting infected or short in the breast, call your doctor, seek, seek care immediately. Next. And if somebody, uh, well, you, may, you must follow the accurate public health advice, follow the news, and avoid spreading rumors. So it's very important. Next. Finally, I must tell you that the wash your hand is very important. Next. And wash your hand huh? after call or eating everything huh? frequently. Next. I'm finished. In, in, uh, and uh, protect others means that when you get sick, you must protect others from getting sick. So you use the uh, uh, tissue paper to close your mouth when you are calling. Next. And uh, avoid close contact with other people. So not to go outside. Stay at home. Not speaking. Next. Okay, finally, I ask a favor of you that uh, you know that uh, this is a, a one all, but some not hand in hand, that Taiwan. Next. So every year we go to WHO to say that Taiwan for WHO. We try to be a member uh, of the WHO. Next. Now Taiwan uh, epidemic control is quite good. So we can help, we can help and we are helping. So please uh, contact with our government. We can help you, you together. Uh, next. And we hope that uh, then next, 
with 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 hand to hand, uh, we can uh, become a better and a healthy world. And uh, God bless you, and God bless our world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tu. I have lots of questions uh, that I'd like to ask you, uh, but uh, in the interest of time, we'll go straight ahead and we can leave the questions till the end. And um, so um, now we'll uh, cover um, Iru, Iru's, uh, um, Iru's uh, topic, and Iru um, will be presenting. Um, Iru will be talking, well, she's already answered her questions, and she's talking about uh, the government measures uh, for shelters and for survivors of domestic violence under the, the current uh, coronavirus situation. So first of all, regarding the, the government's advice for crisis shelters here in Taiwan, um, the government is asking shelters to follow the detailed government guidelines, uh, which we introduced at the, the webinar last week. So you can look them up on our, on our website and uh, see the guidelines that the shelters are following. And these measures include infection prevention, education, training, advocacy about proper hygiene, like Dr. Tu mentioned, um, health management of employees, sheltered residents, management of visitors, reporting, and, and other aspects uh, to protect the shelter. Now, for, for those who actually do have the virus or they're symptomatic, I know, I don't have a problem. Uh, for, for those who do have uh, the virus or they're, they're symptomatic, they have symptoms and they're in quarantine or self-isolation at home and then they, they suffer uh, domestic violence or um, abuse. Um, for these individuals, uh, the government um, will provide uh, shelter in an isolated room, uh, either in a hotel or in a shelter if a shelter has the facilities to isolate uh, the survivor. Um, either in, as we saw last week, in a tent or at the Garden of Hope, we have another floor in the shelter that can do that. Um, now, on the uh, measures the government is preparing for in case of a lockdown, currently in Taiwan, we don't have a lockdown situation. We're very lucky and children are still going to school, um, but uh, we, we, still, we still have to make preparations. Um, as we saw, the, 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 the cases are still rising exponentially here and we'll face that sooner or later. But for other countries that are facing this, um, the, this might provide some advice for you. So uh, we're currently monitoring carefully the number of reports of domestic violence in Taiwan, especially in regions with a greater number of people who are in self-isolation or in quarantine, which will be in the north part of Taiwan. And we'll compare these numbers to last year to see if uh, the numbers have increased significantly, and then we'll, uh, we'll respond to that um, regarding uh, whether they have increased by providing increased protective services. Um, secondly, um, during um, an outbreak, uh, we have uh, the 24-hour uh, hotline, and of course the, the police is still available to call, so we advise survivors of violence here to call the police or to call the protection hotline. And we also have uh, an online platform um, where social workers and survivors can also report incidents of abuse or um, domestic violence, and that's the eCare platform. And as well as um, providing um, hotline consultation, we also have a, an online messaging service that uh, survivors can use uh, for consultations or to report incidents to the police. And then finally, um, we'll, we will continue to promote the Zero Tolerance for Violence Community Plan and raise awareness of the risk of increased domestic violence within the communities during lockdown and uh, self-isolation periods. And we'll encourage um, uh, neighbors and uh, concerned parties to report incidents if they know that something's going on. We're also encouraging cooperation between local governments and um, neighborhood organizations, neighborhood heads, and their staff, um, especially those regarding um, people who they know are in self-isolation or in quarantine at home. And um, so that they're aware that these people are safe in their, own, um, in their own residences. And in accordance with the law, um, when one of these um, local residents, uh, local neighborhood uh, officials uh, knows that uh, domestic violence is happening, then they are, mandated, they are um, required to report that to the authorities. So that's what um, Iru is and her department is doing at the, the Taiwanese government to, to prepare and to react to the coronavirus um, outbreak. So thank, thank you very much for your attention. And now, um, Cindy, can I hand uh, the, the chairing over to you and you can lead 
our uh, regional representatives. I know we have uh, some people from um, Oceania and Asia to speak first, and then we'll have reports from uh, Europe and from North America as well, and Latin America too. And we'll be here to answer any questions if you have that, if you can put them into the, the question box or you can ask them later. And ask, our two speakers will stay here um, to answer your questions. Fantastic. Uh, this is Cindy Southworth with the U.S. Uh, National Network to End Domestic Violence. And I want to thank the Garden of Hope Foundation and the Asian Network of Women's Shelters for hosting the webinar last week on March 25th and also helping with this one. I will be putting in the chat box later the registration link for the next webinar, which will be next Wednesday. And they'll, we plan to have them every Wednesday as long as the uh, coronavirus is something that our gender-based violence movements are addressing. What we're going to do now is switch gears and have regional representatives from different parts of the world give brief updates about their countries and how they're handling things. If you also would like to share a brief update, you can type it into the chat box and share it with all the attendees so that they can see what's happening in your country. I'm going to go first to Shizato from the Japan Network. If you're able to unmute and give us a five minutes to no more than 10 minute update about what's happening in Japan. Okay. Can you speak up just a little bit, Shizato? Yes, uh, can you hear me? You're quite soft. If you can uh, speak, maybe a little closer to the microphone. Okay, can you hear me? Much better. Okay, um, can I use uh, PowerPoint file? You sure can. If you uh, think you can share screen, um, and if not, you can send it to Ashley's slide or to uh, me. I, I, I just sent. <laughs> okay, great. Can you? If you want to go ahead and start, and we'll get the PowerPoint up. Chisanto, I don't have the webinar PowerPoint yet. If you want, okay. if you want to wait, we can get it set up and we'll go to the next speaker and then we can come back to you. How about that? Please. Okay, so we'll do that. If you can send it to me and then we'll get that posted. Okay. And I'm going to move on to Diana from Ecuador. If you don't mind uh, sharing a bit about what's happening in Ecuador. I know you're having a very difficult time with uh, COVID. And it's five o'clock in the morning, her time. So thank you for joining us so early. You'll need to unmute yourself, Diana. Let's try Vanan Nguyen. Let's see if Vanan can speak. Vanan, can you unmute and we'll go to you next? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Yeah. We would love an update from Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, I'm Benang from uh, Vietnam. I would like to uh, overview something about the situation in Vietnam now. Vietnam was locked down from uh, zero o'clock last night. Uh, Vietnam government had, uh, has uh, implemented quite proper preventive measures. People wear masks and self quarantine if they come back from foreign. So far, Vietnam has recorded more than 200 confirmed COVID-19 cases. However, the number could increase hourly, hourly. One of the largest hospitals in Hanoi and a bar clubs in Ho Chi Minh City are considered the worst outbreaks in Vietnam. Yesterday afternoon, Vietnam uh, UN women in Vietnam have an online meeting with the participants of activi activists, organizations, network, and shelter related to ZBB to discuss the issue of women and children during the COVID pandemic. Until now, shelters have implemented preventive measures such as body temperature, checking, travel declaration, requirement and other active measures. The hotline of shelter is the biggest shelter in Vietnam still at label 27. Some other hotline has have difficulties because the counselor cannot move in the city. 
they must be they must use mobile phone and social network to call sell for the customer we are discussing about this issue and maybe um, you and agencies uh, will help us uh, to change uh, number um, by some ways to, to, to solve this issue. Organizations work on CBP issue are now converse from applied to online a lot of activities and uh, suspended other ones. Uh, so guys, my organization hotline have received an increasing number of gender-based violent calls. Some serious case like raping with a trial or investigation process being temporarily uh, haunted. Some women say that they would rather go out and face the risk of being infected by COVID-19 than stay home to face their violent husband all day long. The patriarchy is even scarier than the COVID pandemic. Vietnam's NGO have agreed to compile the following documents. Instruction for victim to get out of danger while living all day with violence, paper cheaters. Instruction for men to control their emotion during COVID pandemic and instruction for local social workers on supporting the BV case. We also agreed to advise government to stay focused on uh, fighting COVID but not ignoring other social issues including ZBV. We think that the COVID pandemic can prolong so we need to be pre prepared to deal with the following consequences. Millions of workers will lose their jobs. Uh, recurrence of poverty, government priorities and uh, promoters for the ZBB issues. We continue to discuss this topic and will update it in the next online meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Vanan, for sharing an update from Vietnam. Next, we will go to um, Chisato from Japan, and we opened the chat box. So if attendees want to share country updates in the chat box, feel free to share what your shelters and rape crisis centers are facing in your countries. And if you have questions, please put them in the question, the Q&A box, <laughs> and we will get to them at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello from Japan. Uh, we are all, for all Japan Women's Shelter Network, and we are a national network, 67 shelter, private shelters. Next, please. Yeah, situation on today, April 1st in Japan, patients number, it's about 3,000, including from cruise ship people, and number of deaths is 77. And school are closing since March. And all sports event, theater play are closing. And remote work is promoted, but no lockdown yet. We think the government will come to decision soon, some kind of decision. Next, please. And at the DB consultation center, many centers are stopping person-to-person -person counseling, only telephone counseling they are continuing. And could the government introduce some kind of benefit payment? We are worried that DV victim cannot receive that. Next, please. So, on March 30th, <coughs> we submitted to the government the request for the prevention of domestic violence and child abuse under the condition of noble providers and agents, please. Next, next please. And in the request letter to the Prime Minister, we said there is a concern that child abuse and domestic violence in a home will worsen and the number of cases will increase. So please do not close the consultation service even in an emergency situation. And please provide for victim protection flexibly. Next, please. 
If temporary benefits are introduced as a remedy for low-income people, there is a risk that spouses and children who leave home because of TV without transferring their residency cards will not be able to, to receive such benefits. Essentially, we think it should be bailed out on an individual basis, but in Japan, I think it's difficult. So even if the benefit is provided on a household basis, uh, we think special measures should be taken for that. Next, please. Also, we ask Prime Minister, please expand the coverage of public assistance. And if a user or a staff or member of the shelter is infected, there is a risk that the location of the shelter will be known. It's reported in detail in the media. Please take into consideration the contents of the DB shelter staff and the report. And our request uh, was widely welcomed. And these days, a lot of media reports our request and we are invited to the hearing uh, from uh, politicians uh, this weekend. <coughs> and that's it from us. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your update from Japan. And now we will hear from Diana from Ecuador. Good morning and good evening with everyone. Uh, my name is Diana Vasquez. I am one of the co-directors for Maria Moore Foundation. Uh, we offer integral attention, included uh, sheltering for women uh, victims of violence with their children. We are located in Ecuador in South America. Um, for your reference, in our city, uh, seven out of 10 women have experienced violence. So uh, in Ecuador, the, the first case of COVID-19 was announced on February 29th. And to date, official data reports more than 2,300 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Uh, the 80% of cases are located in the main port, the city of Guayaquil, which is uh, two hours away from our city. Um, to date, uh, the curfew in Ecuador is from 2 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, by ministerial decree, uh, the shelters are considered as priority care services. However, uh, considering this is the beginning of the year to date, um, we don't come with uh, transfers of resources. Uh, we don't receive the resources yet um, that actually uh, represent at least the 50% of the budget of Ecuadorian shelters. Uh, like most of the Latin American countries, Ecuador was not prepared uh, for the pandemic and all that it represents. Uh, however, our priority is to keep safe and healthy the women and their children. Uh, so we develop actions um, like be um, cleaning and biosecurity protocols uh, that actually were uh, published and socialized uh, to all shelter residents and the staff. Uh, periodic fumigations were started um, uh, in all the areas at the, um, uh, at the shelter. Uh, we develop a rotating staff assistant plan so there are not more people entering and leaving the shelter daily. Um, risk factors such as age, health condition, and others of some of the staff were um, priorities for us uh, so they could carry our um, carry out their activities from their homes. Uh, the transportation of the staff um, is assisting um, 
uh, to the shelter and is coordinated by the organization because here we have a transportation restriction. So it could be difficult for the staff to be um, coming to the shelter. Um, among the services of Casa Maria Moore are, um, uh, are the, the, the accompanied uh, department that are spaces where the women start their, their autonomy process. Uh, so thinking about prevention and the ability to respond to any risk situation, uh, it was proposed to the women who um, to return to the shelter during the emergency. So we can centralize care uh, for all the women just in one space. Uh, Casa Maria Moore has uh, always working on the, the figure of uh, co-direction, making shared decision and um, so despite the uh, limitations with the advanced technology, we managed uh, to define a, a tool for build virtual meetings with a co-direction team formed by um, three people and the coordination, uh, the coordinator uh, from the shelter. Um, just for your information and other services from Casa Maria Moore uh, through um, of uh, economic autonomy, uh, we have small businesses where women receive practical professional training. Um, as, as so they receive a small economic incomes uh, to contribute uh, their economies. Unfortunately, with the crisis, uh, forces that to class. So the other need was born to manage donations with public and private institutions to get uh, for donations and deliver directly to the women who have already left the shelter uh, so they can stay at home uh, with their children. Um, the, the majority uh, from the staff, uh, they are working from home. They are um, we develop our research plan for them, reading books, preparing working documents so they can strengthen uh, their work and their knowledge. But at the same time, we have remote um, services active. The whole line that we have is active 24-7 um, for the women uh, from the external care because we are attending the people who are not at the shelter so they can be uh, receiving containment and emotional support. Uh, uh, but uh, this is a this is a difference with the other countries that I am hearing here. Uh, we can uh, identify. Um, fewer calls. Uh, we understand that actually this is because they are with their aggressors and they are controlling it. So in, on this point, this is different on our country. Uh, and one of the, the, the most difficult situations that we have on our shelter is that um, is the medical care because um, for for the women, um, the women have the women have never experienced an extreme situation like this, and they cannot immediately assimilate that the attending uh, to the hospital or medical center could be a great risk. In this sense, we have started the management to find a doctor who can. Uh, who can go directly to the shelter every week uh, for the tranquility and for uh, the safety of all. Uh, all the, organi the organization, the strategy, biosecurity protocol, donation management and remote care have as their main objective that women conti uh, continue to receive support and long-term care. However, our responses are also actions that contribute to stop infection. Uh, from our reality, I want to share with you that, uh, yes, here in our country, in Ecuador, and I think in Latin America, staying at home is a privilege. And at the same time, it's a risk for women. In the case for the women who started the autonomy process and are living by, by themselves, right now they don't have economic resources to survive. And for the, uh, for the women who are experiencing violence, it is, the, it is a time of of continuous fear because home should be the safe place but actually right now is the most dangerous place so for us it's a very critical time we are um, on the third level with the with the pandemic so uh, we are waiting for resources we hope that uh, on the next week we will be receiving but this is the reality in Ecuador thank you
Thank you so much. I'm going to turn to um, Africa and Europe next. So either uh, Maria from Ethiopia or Pile from Estonia, whichever one of you can unmute, we'll go to you next. Uh, okay, I'm Pila and I'm ready to talk. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, great, so uh, first uh, I would just give a very brief overview about Estonia. Estonia so far has uh, four deaths only and they all are uh, very old people. So, uh, and, and uh, 600, no, 700 confirmed cases we have uh, population. Uh, so, state actively is trying to fight uh, by, by, with all measures we have. Uh, women's shelter situation and uh, turn to shelters is, uh, has not increased until today. So, uh, but we all are in like waiting mode because uh, we expect it to increase as it has been in, in other countries like we know France have had a rapid increase. And uh, from Europe, what we can say now is uh, that, um, as probably you have heard from news, that uh, Hungarian President Orban has, uh, has basically turned into author total authoritarianship. So uh, he can uh, lead by his own decrees the country. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, or we are very, uh, concerned and looking at what's going to happen in Hungary. Unfortunately, we haven't, so far, we haven't discussed with our Hungarian member yet. So maybe next week we can give our uh, update about that. Uh, so, uh, yes, political development also in Poland uh, is using the pandemic to have elections on May 10th. And it looks very much that it goes in favor of the current right wing president. So right-wing uh, people are really extremely active right now. And that is actually something that concerns us because we are so much working in, in fighting with COVID or in, in like preparing and, and working to support women that we don't have actually resources to do uh, uh, advocacy work in uh, towards EU or whatever world, but, uh, but uh, they don't sleep, definitely. And uh, yes, uh, uh, Wave Office uh, have set up uh, also information software page, what we all are distributing and uh, where there is all different material what comes to us concerning COVID and, and uh, different guidelines what to do. So our members and whoever gets to the web page uh, are free to use any, any of this uh, documentation. And uh, yes, Alice also added uh, ch to chat this is our web page. And uh, yes, we are closely working with uh, EU authorities or offices working, wave office, to um, to keep to give updates and and uh, to find solutions uh, on European level. That's all from our side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pile. Maria from Ethiopia, are you able to unmute and share some remarks? Yes, thank you, Sydney. Yes, can you be a little louder? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Sydney, and everybody around there. I hope you stayed well safe after the last discussion. I would like to brief you on the Ethiopian situation. Last time we had six, uh, when I reported, I said 16. One six. Now we have 26, the number is increasing, and two cases got the treatment and they decided to go back to their original country, but uh, you know, all are overseas or some of them are uh, connected or who have connection with the ones who, who came from overseas visitors. And uh, the number is small, but we expect more in the coming days and the government has closed all the borders for those who fly. They are all put in quarantines. Already the, the government has secured and have prepared 50,000 beds, even if something happens, they are already have prepared everything. Doctors are under alert and everybody, every doctor, even, even the ones who 
who have left the hospital have on call and everybody is aware and everybody is prepared. Uh, public transport from one region to another is closed to prevent the virus from spreading. Disinfection was done on the cities and awareness is continuing. The media or all the medias are working hard to create awareness. The Prime Minister is always addressing the people and informing the new development, asking the, the community for support. And the Ministry of Health, who is a woman, is always updating and reminding what should be done by everyone. Women, especially single moms, are breadwinners, and when told to stay home, they will be in a big problem. Ethiopia is a poor country, as you all know. We have a strong culture of supporting each other. A well-organized youth group is supporting those in need, distributing sanitary items by going door to door. In every inch, in, in, in every, we have all water and soap all all over the road, and everybody has to clean. You know, we, we don't so that there won't be any problem, especially for older women and who cannot support themselves. Everybody is donating food item and money. Even women are coming together and contributing and donating. There are no schools, no government schools, no everything is closed except for those who contribute is need and whose contribution is needed. That's Ethiopia. The problem is high number for for people living in the capital city, then their number is very high, and which which makes it difficult for distancing and the and our culture. I want to, uh, our culture is, you know, in the culture living together, we have eating together, and type of greeting has made it difficult, even though much awareness is being done. Uh, still, the, the people hug, they kiss, and they be together. And, and when we come to the shelters, as mentioned last time, we had 16 shelters, safe houses. We all stopped accepting new ones. We all stocked food items developed strategy how to deal with this situation and continuous awareness in the shelters and for staffs and the women and girls and their children is done. And last time I reported that safe house staffs, when they come wash their hand outside of the safe house and when they enter, they change clothes. But now it was too risky and where we had volunteer staffs who don't have children or family to take care, these volunteers stay 24 hours in the safe house. These are the only ones who are taking care of the girls. We have a many number and others don't, nobody comes to the safe house. So even those staffs don't go out, we use telephone telephones to communicate. And, and all this happens in our branch safe houses too. And now, uh, it's in the, in the group, I want to raise uh, two issues. I want two issues for discussion. How long are we going to be close our door? And uh, our Ethiopian network is discussing this issue. How can we deal with it? Quarantine, we don't have the facility and staff to deal about it. But we agree that we need to support these women and girls who need our service. I think it is the problem of most of us. Let us hear from others. I have heard from Taiwan. Uh, Anthony, Anthony, you have said there is an isolation uh, place for, I don't know, it's owned by government or, or by NGOs. It's an isolation place for those type of women. Did I hear you clearly? I don't know. I'm not sure who have experienced so that can you, those, who, those of you who have experience, can you say something about that? And I was trying to, this is my second thing, as I was, my concern was I was trying to check the corona, the, the corona and the pregnant women, their health issue, how they, how they can be treated or when they are on labor, some may need blood, so on. On how can we, can we discuss about it? You know, it's my big concern. And I think, thank you, that's a short briefing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria, for sharing your remarks about what's happening in Ethiopia right now. For people that are joining this webinar but didn't listen to the last one last Wednesday, the recording is on the Asia Network website, and I posted that in the chat a little while ago. And 
in that, there are some really um, powerful presentations, not only from shelters and organizations in Taiwan, but also from Marcella in Italy, uh, Fatima from Morocco, Margarita from Mexico, and uh, Margaret from Australia. So we're, we're trying to rotate uh, different country updates on each one of these webinars. We also have time to take uh, questions from attendees and answer them from different parts of the world. So if you have questions, please continue to put them in the Q&A box and we will, um, Ashley will share them with the panelists to see who's able to answer. Ashley, do you have questions you wanna share at this point? Sure, we have um, a couple of questions and um, Anthony, you had uh, put an answer to one of them, but I figured I would pose the question to all of the panelists. Um, so the first question says, most shelters are unable to provide services here in Nepal as their concern is that it might spread uh, COVID-19, plus they are ready to take in cases only if the person is tested. Uh, but Nepal lacks the kit and we do not have such a great health care. So how do we tackle? And if any of the panelists want to help answer this one, I know that in the United States, we certainly don't have the answers. We don't have enough test kits either, but we are trying to provide uh, services using technology. In fact, the next webinar next Wednesday will be focused entirely on how do we serve survivors during this challenging time. And we will have presenters from SafetyNet Australia, SafetyNet US, SafetyNet Netherlands, uh, Pile from Estonia is going to talk about technology used by uh, advocates to help survivors. But if people have other ideas on how to help uh, the situation in Nepal, other panelists, please feel free to unmute and answer. And Cindy, I can pose the second question too to give people um, a chance to think. That'd be great. So the second question um, was directed towards the Taiwan panelists, but I think any, uh, again, any of the panelists that have information that might be relevant could answer. Um, so the question is, is there a special attention for sex workers? Um, I am on the board of a small shelter for sex workers uh, that consider to quit uh, with their work uh, in the Netherlands, all brothels are closed. And I received a message from Bangladesh that sex workers and brothels there have no work, no income, and therefore lack of food and other essentials. Okay, thank, thank you, Ashley. I'll ask um, uh, Dr. Tu to answer the question, um, and also Maria, I believe, asked the question about uh, pregnant women and uh, COVID-19. Uh, we know that uh, SARS was uh, especially serious uh, for pregnant women, um, so uh, we wanted to ask whether uh, COVID-19 also affects pregnant women in the same way. And uh, secondly, I'll also ask Dr. Tu to remark on the issue of test kits. We don't currently we're not, we don't have a large uh, production of test kits to share with everyone. Um, we, we are producing a lot of masks in Taiwan, uh, 12 million a day, and we're, we're able to send uh, 10 million masks, I think we sent, uh, Taiwan sent to Europe uh, uh, yesterday. So we're able to provide masks, but um, not test kits at the moment. So I wonder if Dr. Tu can comment, if you don't have a test kit, are there other ways uh, to, to, to screen or to protect or to, 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 to help victims. In China, in China, in the beginning, they have no enough kit to test everyone. So they just, uh, they, 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 they didn't go. But finally, they use the diagnostic that uh, chromatography uh, picture diagnosed by clinically diagnosed. And they put so that suddenly increased uh, 15,000 cases one day. That, uh, but uh, the WHO not accept that this kind of document. document. No, they, they only accept that diagnosis by double test. So if you have no kit, but you have disease, you go to the hospital, they try to 
if they don't keep, they try to suspect that you are COVID-19, and you can try some new treatment if, if, if the hospital can afford uh, available for that. In that way, we now we have the treatment. Uh, one, of, one of the treatments that we call uh, 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 hydro hydro cleaning and uh, hydro cleaning cleaning cleaning. Now we we produce that uh, medicine in Taiwan. And, uh, 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 others we have now. And the pregnant women. For pregnant women, the CDC in in in, in the United States that they still don't know if the pregnant women have increased the risk of infection or increased risk of sickness or increased of severity. No, 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 yet. But uh, for prevention, the same with uh, that other, other, other people. Uh, you use a mask, but mask is not really protective. That prevents you to touch your nose. That's good. And, and, and uh, the, you will uh, say that more that now is now really infection. So this is the same. But to, to other virus infection, pregnant women, because of the, the body situation, really increases the chance to become severe, more severe. But for COVID, no, 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 we don't know yet. Not so many pregnant women to see, to answer the question. But prevention is the same. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. This is Cindy. We have a question from Joanne from Malaysia about how do you accept women and children into shelter and know that you've done everything you can to make sure that we're being, um, we're preventing the spread of the virus. And I will say from the United States standpoint, we are encouraging all of our shelters to assume that everybody has it because so many people have don't show symptoms. And so we need to be very thoughtful about how we uh, put families in different rooms. We're trying to use hotel rooms and Airbnb listings and trying to separate families because so many people are carrying the virus but don't show symptoms. We want to be, we want to just assume that people might have been exposed and and serve them and help them as much as we can. And I know that's what PLA just talked about in the chat box that they're trying to do in Estonia is uh, provide information to everyone about prevention and washing hands and, and being sterile, but make sure that we're still helping victims. PLA, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yes, uh, I, I totally agree with Cindy. Uh, we are trying to do the same. Luckily, we don't have too many attendees. We just had uh, uh, two families coming in w within one day, and then we were discussing ourselves how exactly like to make sure, especially nobody in Estonia basically is getting tested. So uh, yes, uh, we just, uh, uh, one thing additional what we do, and cannot really leave the facilities either. So uh, we are bringing them uh, food more than we used to previously. So, but this is as little human contact as possible and uh, everything what is possible to, to chat or, or uh, do via phone call, we are doing this way. Yeah. Do we have other questions from attendees that you want to put in the question and answer box or other updates that you want to post in the chat box? And if any of the other presenters or panelists want to answer any of the other questions or make any additional remarks, we have a little time. So, yeah, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Yes. Dr. Tsu a couple of questions. When do you think this, this crisis will end? No, in, in which country? <laughs> in China, in China, they say that uh, uh, the epidemic end already. They have about one, one with zero new cases, zero less, zero something. But uh, nobody believe. Uh, in other country, that the Korean, they after the the epidemic occur after that about two weeks later, they start to the each case started step down uh, in China about three weeks. 
uh, about the, uh, with all, all one month. In the Europe, most of the increasing. Uh, in France and uh, many Germany still, it is packed or all, all, all started to de decline. In the United States, still going on. In Taiwan, because we have no epidemic, <laughs> we just a sporadic case. So we don't know, uh, our, we have no curve. But the new case all come from outside. We call immigrant uh, uh, because they, they, they take plane and uh, come. So if in Taiwan, because we depend on the other countries' epidemics, because they come from other countries. Now, recently, uh, increased uh, uh, a, a, a lot to Taiwan, but start to decline. And I hope, uh, my vice president says that two months. I hope that maybe two weeks, uh, if other country can control, or we can decrease the, the, the people come back from other country. But that not not really end. Because other countries still going on, so some people will still come in, so and, and cannot end uh, in that time. But I hope that in Taiwan we can avoid, we can prevent the community spread. That's what we try to do now. Thank you. In Latin America, any idea? <laughs> Okay. When will it end in Latin America? <laughs> Trump says that four months later. <laughs> and uh, uh, the expert says that they maybe come back from South, South America. That makes sense. Oh, South America? Yeah. That, that oh, I, so. I don't know South. I don't know quite, quite, quite uh, unless it is. Uh, I know that Brazil is. Brazil now is a uh, 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 trouble. Mm. I think uh, uh, in general, if you can, how to say, knock down the city, decrease the, the, the activities, and increase the social distance, that means that uh, not transmitted, cannot transmit from infected people to health people. You can stop that mm -hmm. and effective, then the epidemic will decrease about the two incubation period, means that the 10 to 14 days. Uh, the, the, you you see that the outcome decrease, and after that, about one month mm -hmm. uh, to to become uh, all, almost zero, zero zero new case, and uh, one more week the panic <laughs> start to decrease. So, so that's the success. Right? Thank you. We have a. a I see, I'll just read this question out if that's okay. So we have uh, another question from Joanne that says, what's the safe accepted temperature, body temperature, mm -hmm. to admit someone to um, a shelter? What's In Taiwan, we use a 37.5. 37.5. Yeah. South, yeah. South, we use 38. But uh, now we use a 37.5 because we are, try to be more sensitive or more alert. Yeah. But no symptoms, what do you say? Now, about uh, 60 to 80 percent have no symptoms. Means, means or he has some, <clears throat> but he think this is not symptom. This is just like uh, clean your mouth, uh, uh, throat. Right? So if you are, do you have symptom? No, no, no symptom. And, uh, he himself or she herself, no, 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 go to see the doctor. So that you don't know, it's about 60% uh, to 8%. This is Cindy from Washington, D.C., and I want to agree with the, the doctor. We, because so few people show symptoms, we don't necessarily want to rely only on thermometers and body temperature. Instead, we want to try to assume that everyone might have been exposed and still provide services. My favorite part of last week's webinar was when Italy talked about how 
despite the incredible amount of cases they have, the shelter movement in Italy is launching a campaign that tells victims that we are here for you. And they want victims to still come forward. They want them to call for help. They are uh, taking over abandoned homes and empty homes to shelter families that need to escape violence. But the, the goal is not to turn away victims during this crisis. The goal is to find different places to put them during this crisis to make sure that we're still serving survivors and keeping our staff safe. Thank you, Sydney, for reminding, reminding us about the Italian last one. Can I come in? Yes, please. Thank you for sharing your remarks, Maria, from yes, Ethiopia. I just, yes, I just got uh, uh, an information from my network, and they said that uh, instead of turning back, we were discussing, and I just I came to this, and they said we have we don't have all all safe houses in Ethiopia don't have a special space, since our all safe houses are fully occupied. We have so many survivors in all the safe houses, and we have agreed. All safe houses have agreed so that they will have, uh, we will rent another house for isolation or quarantine. And we will try to discuss with the Ministry of Health and bring on board other stakeholders so that we, we accept women there. And then we will, give, we will put them in isolation or we will, we will put them in a quarantine. And after screening, after they stay for 40 days, we will take the women to each safe house or teach each shelter. So I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I'm curious if any of the presenters have an answer to this. Uh, Doris from Honduras asks about uh, basic protection materials, masks, robes, or gloves that uh, her experience is that women at shelter don't have access to those. And I will agree that in the United States, when many uh, services are being closed and businesses are being closed, sh uh, shelters are considered essential services. So we're trying to keep them open. But unfortunately, they often do not have access to uh, gloves and masks, and especially uh, since we have a shortage in the United States, they really don't have access right now. So I'm curious if any of the panelists have any suggestions on creating uh, masks as an economic activity, um, perhaps having shelters start doing that as a Doris's suggestion is that maybe shelters start creating those. Can I talk about the experience of Ethiopia? Yes, please. We are short of uh, uh, the um, everything, sanitizing and everything. And now we have we are our women since they are trained on uh, embroidery and we uh, embroidery. They are working on and they have already made. Uh, Something happened to my computer. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm now I get. They have made their masks, and they, have, they are using their own master, and even they are trying to produce more and distributing to other sub shelters that are going to distribute it to other shelters. And I think uh, if trained, if women are trained and they they can all provide in the shelters, they are there in the shelters, and we can teach them. It's simple. Simply, they can do it, and they can use their own masks. I think uh, the doctor can comment on that. Anthony would. Uh the guests want to talk about homemade masks at all? I know there's some yeah. studies about those. Yeah, Dr. Tu has some um, comments about masks and their usefulness. So is it, you say masks are not that okay. useful, but uh, but um, do you think that you can, According you can make to the a WHO experts, hmm. the mask is uh, used by the patient or by the doctor, medical personnel only for you, 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 you are health people, it's not uh, very helpful. If you use uh, N95 or 99, it's even worse because it is so difficult to, to uh, respiration, right. breath. So that, uh, that we did that for the patient and the doctor. 
But if you think this is good, it's good for you to that you cannot touch your mouth and mouth. Yes. And uh, this remind you that now there is something epidemic here. So that you must uh, wash your hand, uh, be careful. And uh, this mask can also use as a kind of uh, one kind of social distance. Mm -hmm. That uh, our government says that if you go into the the the, 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 the public uh, place, if you can cannot separate one one meter or one half meter, then you wear. Well, uh, then this is kind of social distance because social distance is to try to prevent transmission virus from you to me. Then if I use this, then, then it is protective. So this is... Uh, and how about cloth masks? Cloth really... masks have the same, the same, but this cannot fit bacteria or, or virus. This is just uh, for kind of uh, dust or the wind only, but it still help because you can, you can touch your, <laughs> touch your face or you can prevent the job. The dodgy problem, yes, but virus, no. So if you go to the hospital, please wear we call surgical mask. Yeah. That, 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 that. But if you just uh, to ride a bicycle or motor bicycle, then you use that cotton mask is okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does that answer the question, Cindy? Yes, thank you so much. Do you have, do your uh, guests have any last words they'd like to share with the attendees? Perhaps, G, you want to say something? I have the, uh, the chairperson of uh, GMWS here and my, my boss, G. Hoi Would you like yeah. to say anything? Just thank you everybody because uh, I think that we can share each other and uh, many of uh, the countries that share their situation. I think that we can still keep in mind and probably after that we can have some help each other program. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, G. And thank you all of the presenters and panelists and for all of the attendees who shared your notes, your information, your country updates, everything from how you're making masks for people in shelter to how you're surviving this uh, global pandemic. We are committed to continuing to create space for dialogue every Wednesday, and we will rotate the times so that they are always bad for someone, but always good for someone else. So we thank people that came at five in the morning. Uh, Diana from Ecuador was up quite early, and uh, we've got people uh, in Asia that are on the on the call quite late. The next one will be at 9 a.m. Uh, in Washington, D.C., so it'll be starting three hours later next Wednesday, and I put the registration in the chat box. The one that we were doing on April 15th will be at 6 p.m. Washington, D.C., so that it will be a much better time for Australia and New Zealand and Asia to participate. Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming together, sharing your successes, your struggles, and how we survive this pandemic and keep supporting survivors of violence. Thank you all, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. See you next thank week. You. Thank you for today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. We will send the recording and any additional information by email in the next two days. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe.